Hi everyone, Liz from Liz and Annie here with a short update uh, in terms of how to use Zoom's polling feature. So we've made a video in the past uh, kind of illustrating how you could use the polling feature that we all have in our Zoom accounts down here to launch a poll to your meeting attendees, to your students, whatever you might want it to be. So these are examples of different polling questions I've used so far this quarter. Some of them were for illustrative purposes when we were creating these tutorial videos that I didn't actually deploy to any of my undergraduate students or graduate students. Some of them have to do with things relevant to my undergraduate classes, like I have a poll uh, that I used in one of my uh, synchronous class meetings to make sure that students were with me in terms of what the expectations for the class were after we went over the syllabus. I have other stuff that has to do with content we've been covering in my class with little like short heuristic names for the poll questions that I can remember. So I know like in lecture four, this is the second question that I'm gonna try to push to my students. Okay, so I know everyone is probably really comfortable and familiar with everything about polling. Um, we can push this, our students can have as much time as we uh, deem appropriate, our meeting attendees can answer the polling questions for like 30 seconds or a minute or whatever we decide. And then we can either share the results of the poll with everyone if we wanna check understanding and help students see what, where they might be going wrong or where other students are getting something or there's like a uh, split in terms of people's mastery or comprehension of something that we've just gone over in class. But we might also want those data downloadable so that we can use them for other things. So one of the things I'm doing in my undergraduate class that meets synchronously is counting um, participation in the polls that I include in some of the lectures as evidence of course participation. So my students have a variety of options for engaging with the class. Uh, they can attend the synchronous lecture meetings and the discussion sections they're expected to attend synchronously. Uh, they can also watch everything that I record in the lectures offline or asynchronously whenever it's convenient for them. But if they are in the lecture meeting and they have a question, they can chat that to me. I answer all the questions in the chat as they're coming through. And sometimes I also uh, give them a poll question, which is not great. I don't treat it like a quiz where I actually care whether they got it right or wrong. I'm not usually using this polling feature to, to do those sorts of assessments. Instead, I'm using it to gauge their understanding whether they're with me on something that I've just explained to them. So using it as kind of like, a uh, stopgap for the fact that, as opposed to my in-person classes, I can't see my students as I'm speaking, as I'm lecturing, to see if I'm getting a lot of confused faces about something that I just explained, or a lot of students are nodding because something just clicked for them for the first time. So I'm using the polling feature in Zoom to kind of work around the fact that I can't see my students and their immediate feedback to me in terms of whether something I said was clear or confusing, the same way I would in an in-person lecture. So I'm not, I'm not interested in uh, using their poll responses to give them points for like getting quiz questions correct, although you could do that. It's just that there's an additional step that you have to think about because the Zoom output, the CSV file that it can generate for you for the polling data doesn't uh, interface automatically with the LMS that we're using on this campus. So you could still use it the same way you would any kind of CSV or Excel or spreadsheet data. So you could get it into your learning management software, you could get it into Blackboard, you could get it into iLearn if you're uh, UCR affiliated or Canvas or whatever you might be using for your course. That's not hard, but there's still like an added step that needs to happen for the responses that students gave to be kind of marked as correct or incorrect. So uh, with that in mind, you can obviously use the polling feature for whatever you think is pedagogically useful or relevant in your class, but I wanna show you how to actually get the information out of the back end of the Zoom program so that you could use it if you wanted to, or at least go through and like link up student names and responses to give them engagement or course participation points, which is what we're doing in my class. So <clears throat> I'm in my uh, the webpage version of my Zoom account as usual. I'm under reports. Uh, so the preference or the preference, the links, the options that you have on the left hand side, if I had the window fully expanded reports, then I go to usage reports and then I'm under meeting. So I have two options here. Uh, one is a report queue. So if I asked it to generate a lot of different reports for me, it would spit them out into this queue tab. So I could go look there when I think something should be ready that I've asked it to generate. But first I want to actually like figure out what meeting it is that I'm thinking about that I'm uh, wanting it to give me the data for. So I have tons of Zoom meetings always in the same room. I don't have different meeting invites for the different 
uh, things I use my Zoom room for. So whether it's class or office hours or individual meetings with my graduate students or undergraduates or like uh, conversations that I might be having with colleagues, doesn't matter. I'm using the same Zoom room. So I have many, many um, pieces of data in all of the different uh, tabs within the report part of my Zoom account because of that. And so just to give you a sense, I've already searched by a very narrow date range here. I've searched essentially for meetings that took place in my Zoom room last Friday. So April 24th on a Friday. And that's because I know I had a meeting with my TAs for one of my undergraduate classes. So instead of revealing to you anything that might be sensitive in terms of names or information about the undergraduate students, I'm just gonna show you what a polling output uh, metric looks like for a meeting that I had with my graduate student teaching assistants helping me with a course. I gave them a poll question in the meeting just to demonstrate that you what you could do with it and what it would look like. So I know that I am actually going to look for a particular meeting where I use the polling function. Otherwise, I'd have to scroll through lots of different meetings uh, like uh, displayed here to figure out which which one and which like start and stop time of the meeting I was interested in and. Sometimes it will like show you all the meetings that you had, but it won't filter them by ones where you deployed a poll question or you used the polling feature. Uh, and that's a function, actually it's a function of the fact that I'm always using the same Zoom room for every meeting. So um, oh, here's a, let me see if there's a way I can sh illustrate that more clearly than what I just said. So if I open the polling feature in my uh, Zoom app and I wanna edit it, I click on edit and then it's gonna take me to a particular part of the web page version. And we've shown you this before, but I think this will help illustrate what I'm talking about. Hopefully it will do this. Okay, hello. Yeah, okay, it's loading the thing kind of slowly today. All right, so here's the, the pop-up window we've shown you before that will let me add new poll questions or change anything if I want. But if I X out of that or I cancel that, what I can do is essentially like, this is the same Zoom room that I use for everything, right? So I don't use different calendar invites. I've already said that. But what that means is it thinks every single poll question that I've got is uh, to be used or available for me to deploy for this meeting. And this meeting is the only meeting that I ever have. So every single poll question I've ever created or wanted to use, whether I use it or not, shows up for me as affiliated with or linked to this meeting and this Zoom room. So that is why in my other tab here, um, if I am not searching by a precise date, knowing exactly what meeting I'm looking for, I get like uh, a really long list of every single Zoom meeting that I, I might've had. And it will give me a clue, you know, by telling me the start time of the meeting, how many people were in it. So I can figure out if this is like an individual meeting with a student, was that my office hour? Was that my, meeting with eight TAs for one of my undergraduate classes, what was it? So just FYI, your backend might look really different because you might be using the meeting invite function to schedule different kinds of meetings or using the template to have certain kind of meetings set up for things you're doing with your uh, delivery of your course content versus office hours versus individual meetings with your col colleagues or collaborators or whatever. So in case it looks different and that was confusing, I just wanted to make sure I could like illustrate that. So I'm looking, I'm actually looking for this meeting on uh, Friday, April 24th. It started just before 2 p.m. So that's when I have a meeting that tends to recur with my teaching assistants. And there are nine people, so that makes sense. Um, sometimes it will count attendees twice if they leave and come back to the meeting. So if I cared about that, I could look at the uh, other usage reports, so not under the meeting one, but there's another tab under this if I navigate back one one step that lets me look at usage. So that'll tell me like who actually attended and for how long uh, in my meeting. So if somebody like stepped out and then came back in, I would have that information. But what I want right now is the poll. So I'm going to ask it to generate this for me. And now it's taking me automatically to my report queue tab. So I'm not under meeting report now. I'm over here. And uh, right here in this column, it's telling me, okay, it's April 28th, and just a second ago, I asked it to generate this report. And the report is from April 24th. So I asked it today, Tuesday, to give me a report from a poll that I may have deployed Friday in a meeting. And I can download this. 